Good evening and an early Merry Christmas to you. And uh, we are so looking forward to this evening and uh, so thankful for the time that we're able to spend together. And just hold on to your candles and uh, we actually close out the service with that. We're going to do a little bit more singing this evening, not just in the uh, beginning and middle of the service, but towards the end of it we'll do more singing um, with by candlelight and so we're sure going to enjoy the time together this evening and uh, then you can use it to warm your hands also if you need to okay and uh, but let's start off we're going to start singing some Christmas carols tonight grab your songbooks that are right there turn over to page number 136 136 there's a song in the air let's all stand together and we're going to sing a couple different songs together now 136 now there's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer, and a baby's low cry, and the star rings its fire while the beautiful sing, for the nature of Bethlehem, cradles a king. singing tonight and uh, so thankful how many for this time of year it's your favorite time of the year Christmas time Christmas season I feel like we've been going after Christmas now for a month 
And uh, as I pulled in the driveway this later this afternoon, getting ready for this evening, I said, you know, it's just been a wonderful Christmas season. And uh, not just a day, but yet just week after week after week in preparation for it. Of course, several Christmas parties. We had a wonderful time. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you one mess up that I have, and I think he stepped out right now, is Brother Don Andrews, the one who gave you that candle when you walked in here probably, is wearing that wonderful sweater. How many believe that Don Andrews looks great in that sweater, vest, and everything with the bow tie? And uh, he said, he said, I don't know if I'm going to wear that tonight. I said, oh, I said, there's going to be others. I said that have things like that on. I thought for sure because there was some, there, there was talk of some suit jackets and, and, uh, and everything going. And then nobody else wore it tonight. And I said he's by himself. So I might have to call him up here in a little while and just put him in front of everybody. But because uh, everybody online right now is saying, I want to see what he's wearing. And uh, so that's my mess up for today is he's the only one. But uh, he's a good sport about it. It's all my fault. And uh, let's have a word of prayer, and then you can be seated, and we're going to sing some more, okay? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this time of year that you've given to us. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather together. And uh, Lord, what a night this was a couple thousand years ago as the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, was being born. And uh, we're so thankful for that. Thank you so much for allowing us to be able to know Jesus. And uh, Lord, he wasn't just a baby that was born, but he was a Savior that died for us and rose again. And uh, Lord, we're so thankful for that. Thank you for making a difference in my life. And uh, Lord, help us tonight to rejoice and to be able to sing our praises to you, sing about Jesus now. In his name we pray, amen, amen. You may be seated, and we're going to keep singing some more and uh, turn over to page number 141. 141, it came upon a midnight clear. Now listen, after this, we're going to take a few moments, and uh, if you have a, uh, I put it down as just having uh, Christmas testimonies and memories. And so maybe one of your favorite Christmas memories growing up or, or maybe your favorite part of Christmas or Christmas testimony that you have. So be thinking about that and uh, we'll open the floor and be able to take some testimonies and uh, some favorite Christmas memories, okay? After we get done singing. Page 100, 141, remain seated. We'll sing all four verses now. <clears throat>
I was thinking today because maybe several, like several of you, um, the power's out at our house from the storm that came through. So went out yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. And uh, so thank the Lord for a generator. It's running, keeping our pellet stove going. The house is warm. And uh, but I thought, you know, I said the first Christmas they didn't have any power either. And I said, but the blessing we have today is my wife's not giving birth. <laughs> so I said, praise the Lord for that. That's a blessing. And uh, we're so thankful. And so, but there is always something that we can give thanks for and uh, throughout this time. And so why don't we take a few moments, and I always like to open it up and uh, be able to just give some, maybe some of your favorite Christmas memory or Christmas testimony or just something you're thankful for uh, from all this past year. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, John. This is from way back. Um, my dad had a, always had a Land Rover, and a couple of times he had a four-door, which the, they called a whale. So we'd pack all seven kids into the back of the whale, and he'd bring his bow saw, and we'd go up to the tree farm, and it'd be after dark, and he'd have a Coleman lantern that we'd have to take turns carrying. So it's all seven kids, mom and dad at the front, and a toboggan in the back to, to put the lop tree on. And uh, by the time we got back, we were frozen. We'd have hot chocolate. And yeah. Great old times. So. Should I ask if there was a reason it was after dark that you were going on to a tree farm to cut a tree? I'm just asking. Prepaid. Okay, prepaid. I, you, just, you never know. Go. Ahead. We'll go after dark and get that one. You don't have a little lantern up like this. But, you know, yes. Not going to get too far. Yeah. Go ahead, Wayne. Uh, back when I was a kid, my, my uh, stepmother, her <coughs> older sister, had the candles that they put on the Christmas tree. This, this was a Swedish way of doing it. And we went over to her house one night, and she had the candles there. She lit a few of them, not all of them. So, you know, it's something you saw alive and not just on an old Western winter Christmas scene. Yeah. I remember getting our Christmas trees. We never bought a tree, but we always had permission to go on our, our farmer's property. Our neighbor it was a farmer on the, her property next door. And so we'd have to go trudge through the snow and then go up and find a, a, a Christmas tree to be able to cut down. But um, it didn't always have to be one that was close to the ground because once my brother was old enough there were times he'd climb 20, 30 feet up into the tree and just cut the top off and drop that down and we would haul that back to the truck and, uh, and so be able to take that back to the house. So that was always an interesting time. And so I have seen some rednecks down south, they would use their shotgun <laughs> instead of a saw or an ax and they would, they would shoot the, the, that tree off. And uh, we'll have to try that sometime. Anyway, not now. Go ahead, Beverly. My husband used to take the kids down by the river. That was he while I was cooking, and they'd, he'd shoot the top off of us. <laughs> I guess we got a little bit of southern relaxation. Like I said, oh my Lord. I, I found out there's rednecks in New Hampshire, too. <laughs> so oh. Wonderful. Nate, go ahead. Um, Ruthie and I have been reading through one chapter of Luke for every day of December. Um, and it's just incredible. We got to the resurrection today and just that, that amazing ending to the story. But just all throughout it, the love of God and how much it shines through every moment is just astonishing. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Someone else? Go ahead, Titus. Um, I'm thankful that last Christmas I got to spend Christmas with my family. Yes. Are you going to be able to this year? With, like family down south. Oh, the family down south. <laughs> yes, yes, they you did get. To... Me to come. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're up here with all of us this year. Yes. Go ahead. But I'm not sick for Christmas this year. Isn't that a great thing? You're not sick for Christmas. Yes. And I'm thankful this whole family has come into my life this year. That's one of my great blessings this year. Good. I guess we could be thankful that you brought us uh, brought us here nine years ago. Yeah, what a blessing. Christmas parade. Yeah. 
So yeah, what a blessing. Thank you. Result of the Christmas parade. <laughs> yeah, that still takes place before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Doesn't that seem like it was about four months ago right now? All right, Priscilla, go ahead. I thank God for my husband, Bobby, and I also thank God for my church family. With you guys, I'd be nothing. Thank Wonderful. Isn't it great to be able to come together? Someone else, favorite Christmas memory? Or go ahead, Kevin. Um, December 16, 2016, my mom was in hospice. And she told the hospice nurse, I love my son. Amen. 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 I remember our first Christmas after we moved here to New Hampshire. Our whole family was down sick with the flu. <laughs> and so we woke up on Christmas morning, opened a few presents, and we all went back to bed and slept for the day. <laughs> so that was our day. Someone else? Christmas memory? Go ahead. I just remember growing up, um, my daddy always plowed the roads. That was his job. He always worked. And he always, for some reason, had to get out, called out on Christmas Day. We always had a way to open our presents. <laughs> I thank the Lord I'm a girl. I didn't have to drive a plow truck for a living. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Someone else? Go ahead. Uh, a few years ago, generally after, right at the day after Christmas, we go visit uh, my niece and nephew and their kids. And uh, we're admiring their tree that they just brought in the day before Christmas, and as we're all standing around the tree, a flying squirrel comes flying <laughs> out of the tree and just runs around the room, and we spent pretty much the rest of the afternoon trying to catch it. <laughs> oh, that's a memory. Miss Darlene? My favorite memory is of my mom at Christmas Eve. Every Christmas Eve, we would have a big thing at her house, and it was her favorite time of the year. That's my favorite memory. Yeah, wonderful. Someone else? Go ahead. I got a Christmas memory. Back when Andy was first born, on December 7th, my, it was at Christmas that year, it was at my sister's house in Gorham, and she had everything on the table labeled where it goes, and this is where the roast goes. And so I took little baby Andy and put him on the plate where it said <laughs> roast. It was, we got a really cute picture of him at home. Was, Where's the picture? Uh, I didn't bring it. I, oh. I <laughs> but that was just a cute memory. Yeah. And at least it wasn't know. some weird cult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's back when the, um, the whole family was together. And yeah. It was a whole family yeah. unit, not like it is today. But that was a good memory. Yeah. Yeah. I think you ought to, you know how the trend is today to be able to reenact the pictures that you took when you were younger. I think that'd be great. We need a bigger, we need a bigger platter. Need, need, a, need, a, need a platter. Need a platter. Go ahead, John. You get another one? I have a noteworthy praise. Yes. Uh, our friend Al, who received a new heart on December 12th, broke every record at Tufts Medical Center, and he went home, I think, eight or nine days later. Wow. Wow, uh, what a blessing. He was... He was uh, walking in his kitchen and lost his balance and fell and broke a couple of ribs. So he was at Concord Hospital for the afternoon and then they sent him home. Wow. Ouch. All right. Yeah. I got another one. You're going <laughs> to love this one. This was in the early 60s. We lived on a farm in Barrington. Any of you must know where Caliph's country store is? All right, Route 9 goes across the front of it. Okay, well head south on Kalos Highway and you're going to go a few miles so you come to Winkley's Pond on the left. Well, the right is Beauty Hill Road. We lived up that road. Well, it was gonna, let's go get a Christmas tree. I said, I know where it was a beautiful one because I was always going out in the woods. So, fine was on the hill, we go down the back field and into the woods we go. I say we, my sister Leah and I, just the two of us. Well, I'm going to shorten the story up. My father had to come and pick us up at, at Broom's, uh, it's a, a, a plant place on Route 9. We walked. <laughs> it wasn't straight at first. But when Dad heard my voice on the phone, he says, What are you doing up there? <laughs> Cheer up, Dad. I got the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when Dad got there, he said, where's the tree? 
Well, when Lee and I got to the point we saw the road and the cars going by, we said, let's leave the tree right here. <laughs> I don't want to be walking along the side of the road carrying a tree. So then we got into the Brooms house. They said, sit down. They gave us hot chocolate, Lee and I. Gave us each a gift, which was really amazing. And anyways, Dad and I walked in. Must have been about a mile to get the tree. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a memory. <laughs> oh, that's a memory. Someone else? Go ahead. Uh, a couple years ago, um, my best friend's mom, we went over to their house for Christmas, and we were, we were opening the gifts we gave each other, and she, and she came down in this uh, oversized Santa costume with a, with a fluffy white beard, and, <laughs> and she opened presents like that, and that was just hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Santa hasn't put his outfit on yet. He's sitting behind you today. <laughs> it's Amy. Um, one of my favorite memories is there's 10 years between me and my younger sister. And so um, I was the troublemaker growing up. And we used to get up at like um, 3 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day. And we'd go down and we'd prepare all of our presents, make sure everybody had theirs in the right order. And um, then I knew my mom like drilled it into us not to wake her up before six o'clock. <laughs> so we knew not to wake them up, but um, we would sit there. And so at a very young age, Victoria and I started doing devotions together at like four o'clock in the morning on Christmas day. And um, we, we weren't allowed to open the presents, but we would get our stockings. <laughs> so we'd sit there and eat candy and do our devotions. Yes. Wait till six o'clock. <laughs> Are you calling her tomorrow morning at four o'clock? Yes. Yes. Well, there you go. Don't wake your husband up at four o'clock. <laughs> All right. Someone out. Go ahead, Nate. We'll take one or two more. Um, I remember a few years back. I want to say it was 2015. We had a really warm Christmas. It was like 60 degrees out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my family had a cookout. We had steaks, and we went on a hike for Christmas. <laughs> That's unique for up here. Go ahead, Ron Sassy, you got the last one. Okay, uh, we established a tradition uh, way back when, when our sons were younger, Ruth would bake a birthday cake and we would sing the happy birthday to Jesus. So that was pretty cool. Yes. So are you having birthday cake tomorrow? No. <laughs> we need power. <laughs> That's true, yeah. They don't have power at their house either. And so they did have in junior church last week, they had a birthday party for Jesus with all the kids downstairs in junior church. And uh, so wonderful. All right, I said you had the last one, but Savannah's got her hand up back there. And so I'm going to go ahead and take Savannah. Go ahead, Miss Savannah. We're decorating the Christmas tree. That's always a good time, isn't it? Decorating the Christmas tree. Let's do a survey here. How many of you only decorate the one side of the tree that's actually out towards the living room and everything? You only do that one side that how many do all the way around the tree because your spouse or somebody puts it up next to a window and they want everybody else to be able to see it too? Yeah. Our favorite Christmas tradition that my wife and I have had is uh, trying, yeah, so far, we got to go home but uh, is seeing how long our tree will stand without falling over. And uh, so, because we are some of those that we, we put it in a corner, so we're only doing really two thirds of it and decorating, so all the weight's on one side of it. And so I think one year it, it fell, the same tree fell, I think three times. And uh, so water all over the floor, broken ornaments, and uh, so it was back when those Pandora bracelets were real popular. And so I actually got her a Christmas tree that year to put on there to be able to commemorate uh, all the trouble that our Christmas tree put us through. And so thankfully this year, it's still, as of tonight when we left, it is still upright. And so we'll try to keep it that way, okay? All right, let's turn over to page number 140. 140, the first Noel, page 140. Why don't we all stand for this one, and then we'll share some scriptures together. 140, the first Noel.
may be seated. We're going to take our Bibles tonight, and I'd like to read some of the Christmas story. We're going to start in Luke chapter number 2, and this portion of the Christmas story. This is something our family has done ever since the beginning of our family, is sit down on Christmas morning and be able to read about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so... I guess we could have taken the time and asked what some of your uh, favorite traditions are, whether it be by way of your meal or some of the things that you do. Um, We used to hide the the little pickle hanging in the Christmas tree and uh, allow them to be able to try to find that, and whichever one found that first got to open the first gift. And uh, so just different things like that. And then we don't usually do a great big meal. One of our traditions, we just always go get Chinese food. And uh, that's what we eat for, for a Christmas meal. Does anybody else do that on Christmas that you eat Chinese food? Oh, it was just oddballs tonight. That's tonight. How many do a Chinese food on Christmas Eve? Okay. I knew we were always a day late and a dollar short on what we were doing. and uh, But we're in Luke chapter number 2, and let's read the Christmas story. And there's a few things that, um, in relation to it that the Lord's put upon my heart for this evening, and I want to share them with us. Luke chapter 2, verse number 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxin was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Boy, wouldn't it be wonderful if that same message of peace, goodwill toward men would be broadcast across to the land, to all people today, and uh, truly they would have that. As I thought towards Christmas, it was several years ago that, that actually we preached through going through the month of December and looked at the individual characters of Christmas. We looked at Joseph, we looked at Mary, we looked at the shepherds, and then afterwards we looked at the wise men. We looked at the different characters of Christmas as we looked at it. As I went back, and it seems like every year that the Christmas story is fresh and new as I go back and read. I don't ever want to get to the point that uh, it's, it's just routine because it was a tremendous miracle that took place with the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I started thinking about, again, the different characters of Christmas, I started thinking through, and of course, the the main character besides the Lord Jesus Christ, let's not forget about Jesus at Christmas time, okay? 
but the one who's spoken of the most would probably be his mother, and her name is Mary. There's so much that is said about Mary, and, and of course through the Bible, but then even modern day as we have it throughout religions today. And I look down through the scriptures, and there's a phrase that Mary made mention of that she quoted, um, and it's her words as we looked at it. And I want to look for a few moments tonight on this subject matter, on the submission of Christmas. The submission of Christmas. You see, everything that took place with the announcements being made, every one of the characters of Christmas um, that were there, that were part of this unfolding drama and story that came down from heaven, every one of them had to have something in their heart that they were submissive to to the will of the Lord. And I want us to turn, as we've just read about Joseph and Mary and the angels making the announcement to the shepherds and them coming and finding Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. Turn back with me one, a couple pages if you need to, to Luke chapter number one. This is going back uh, just over nine months from what we just read in Luke chapter number two, in Luke two, the baby is born. Baby Jesus makes his entry into the world here. But back in Luke chapter number one, we actually have the announcement from the angel and coming to Mary saying, you're going to be found with child. And I want to read down through here because the announcements made, thou shalt bring forth a son. That's in verse number 31 that says, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Okay. Now we come down and we see this question in verse number 34. This question that Mary asked after she's just been told you're going to conceive. In verse 34, Mar then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. Now, understanding this, and, and uh, we won't get too deep into the specifics this evening, okay? But what Mary is saying here in verse number 34 is, how's this going to happen? I've never been with a man. I don't know a man in the biblical sense is what she's saying, okay? How can this be? How shall this be seeing I know not a man? Well, then we come down and, and the angel is explaining that it is going to be supernatural, the Holy Ghost of God, and then gives the example here in verse number 36 of her cousin Elizabeth, and uh, she's actually in her old age, and she is expecting a child also. But I want you to see verses 37 and 38 as we get here. And listen, we're coming to this subject matter of submission, the submission of Christ. Christmas, verse 37, the angel says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now understand that Mary is asking a question, how shall this be? Now that's a very real and logical question. If you have a virgin young lady and she is being told by an angel of heaven that you're going to conceive and she's saying, how's that going to happen? and gives her testimony right there, listen, how can it happen? Because listen, I haven't done physically what's necessary to be able to conceive. The angel says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And here's the submission that we see, verse number 38. And Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord. And it's this phrase, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed from her. And I thought here during this Christmas story, I thought with Mary, and here the announcement is being made, here she knows she's going to start expecting, and she automatically at that point, her submission went from intellect to faith. Submission of intellect to to faith. You say, what do you mean? She is trying to work it out in here on how is this all going to happen? 
I don't believe I've lost anybody that understands exactly what I'm talking about, right? right. She's saying, how is this going to happen? Listen, two and two's not adding up right now. I'm going to have a baby, but all the prerequisites are not there for her to be able to have a baby. It's going to be miraculous. And she said, okay, I'm going to submit my intellect of saying, I know this is how it's supposed to happen, to now I'm going to submit to faith of saying, listen, whatever the Lord desires for my life, I'm okay with that. And I wonder this as we go through the Christmas season, and there's a few other things we'll look at tonight, but I wonder as we go through the Christmas season, I wonder if we would look at the submission of Mary, of her intellect of saying, how's this going to happen, to now move into her heart and saying, Lord, whatever you have for me, be it unto me according to thy word. And asking the Lord and saying, Lord, my life is yours. If this is what you desire, can you imagine the, the heart of Mary? Now, I know some, and, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to make mention of this, that there's, there's many places that have idolized Mary, and they have, they have set her on the, on the same level as what they, they put the Lord Jesus Christ and where the Lord Jesus Christ rightfully is. But can I remind us that by the time this is done in verse number 47, that Mary is rejoicing and says, My spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. And so she is even acknowledging that she is not perfect, there is nothing in her except for God has smiled upon her and she's understanding here in verse number 47. She's not perfect. She's a sinner. She needs to be saved just like everybody else and says, I'm rejoicing in God, my Savior. And at that point, she was willing to submit herself to whatever the will of God was for her life, the submission of intellect to faith. But then I saw this also. I also saw, and we won't take the time to read over in all the verses, but if you remember in Matthew chapter number one, we have where the angel came and announced it to Joseph. Now, Joseph, if you go back and look, Joseph and Mary at this point were engaged. Bible says that she was espoused to Joseph. They were engaged to be married, and now his fiance is going to be expecting a child. And guess what? As much as she knows that's not my child, he knows that's not my child. So the angel comes also and makes an announcement to Joseph while he's thinking on these things. Now, to take it back a couple thousand years, listen, the law of the land back then was, listen, if a young lady was found um, actually expecting a child and not being married, it was the law of the land that, listen, they were actually stoned. They were shunned by people. In, in many cases, they were taken outside the city. They were stoned because of the fornication and the immorality that took place. Here, Joseph has his fiance that he's engaged to, and she's coming with child. And the Bible says in Matthew 1 that while he thought on these things, what was he thinking about? He was thinking about that, that Old Testament law of saying, listen, my fiance that I'm engaged to has been found with child. He knew, he knew what the law of the land was. But yet the angel said, listen, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Fear not to take her unto thee as your wife. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. And I read this phrase talking about submission at Christmas time, where Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. The Bible says that when Joseph woke up from that dream after the angel had spoken to him, that Joseph said this, it says he raised from sleep and did as the angel said commanded him to. He gets up and he said, hey, God said it was okay. I'm going to take her as my wife. But he also said, that the Bible also says this, he knew her not till after she brought forth her firstborn son. 
And I thought here we have it in Matthew chapter number one, there's a submission from the Old Testament law to the word of God. There's a submission from culture and what culture was saying was supposed to be done and a submission to go against culture and say, I'm going to obey what God has told me. And I thought, listen, in our lives, wouldn't it be a blessing here in 2022 to understand what the Bible says, what is right and what is wrong, regardless of what culture is saying out there and saying, I'm just going to believe and obey and submit to what I've been told by the Lord. Now he did wake up and take her to be his wife. That was the right thing to do. A submission from culture to the word of God. We've traveled in several countries overseas as we were with the prison ministry. And it was amazing over and over that we'd get told this. We'd say, well, that's not our culture. That's not our culture. It's our culture here. And I very much appreciate it when I say we're starting at 6 o'clock. Guess what time we're starting? 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. I appreciate that. Okay. I've been over in some places. I remember we walked into Liberia and we were, we were just outside the capital city and they're like, hey, we're going to be at this church tonight and we're going to have a revival services and this whole nights of, of special services and we're going to get started. And they'd always say this word, about. About seven. About 11. And I'm thinking, what's this about stuff? And we're out there. We didn't even show up till seven o'clock. And nobody's there. They're all walking to come to church. And so maybe 7.30, maybe 7.45, maybe 8 o'clock, they finally get all done their walking, and they're all there and gathered around. It's all right, let's get started now. And I say, well, you know, back in America, we start on time. Well, that's not our culture over here. We're just, we're just not. And we talk about that. Listen. Joseph was willing to submit himself, listen, outside of culture and what the law was saying should have been done. He's saying, I'm taking my wife and Mary's going to be with me because this is miraculous what's taking place. Now, I could share a few more. I'll say this. We just read about the shepherds over in Luke chapter number two. Do you understand that the shepherds, after they came, they, they came from off the hillside to be able to find the Lord Jesus. Shepherds were those that lived in obscurity. And uh, it was mentioned a few weeks ago that even their legal rights and even their popularity, listen, that was not the most desirable job to be able to have is to be a shepherd back then. But yeah, that's who, cho who God chose to be able to reveal the message that Jesus had been born. And the shepherds, they said this in Luke chapter number two that we just read. They said, let's go see this thing that we've just heard about. I preached on it a few weeks ago. And the Bible says in Luke chapter two, verse 17, we didn't read that verse. I'll go ahead and read it to us now. Luke chapter two, verse 17, it says, and when they had seen it, they made abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. You understand at that moment that they were willing to submit themselves from privacy of, listen, just leave us out there on the hillside. Just leave us to ourselves. We're not bothering anybody. We'll take care of the sheep on the hillside. They went from privacy to publicity. And they went everywhere. They went everywhere. The Bible says, made abroad the saying that was told them concerning Jesus. Hey, we've seen Jesus. He was born. But yeah, they had to submit to that. Hey, do you understand what submission is? Submission is a yielding of our will to someone else. And in this case, listen, the submission we're speaking of around Christmas time is the submission of ourselves to the will of the Lord. Because we see it all the way through the Christmas story. And then can I finally say this? The last one that truly submitted himself around Christmas time was none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, we understand, and I can give you a couple verses. You can get over to John chapter number 8, but Jesus said this at the end of John chapter 8 and verse 29. He said, I do always those things that please him. We know that while he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he began to take the, your sin and my sin upon himself, he prayed and said, not my will, but thine be done. And he actually submitted himself. Now listen, 
The Bible also tells us in Philippians chapter number 3 that he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Do you understand a few verses before that, that it says he took upon himself the form of a man? In other words, you understand the God of heaven, Emmanuel, that we sing about today? Just the term Emmanuel means God with us. That Jesus, that baby that was born and laid in that manger a couple thousand years ago, and the Bible tells us over and over, is God in the flesh. That when Jesus started walking around as a little toddler, listen, that wasn't just another baby boy. That was God in the flesh walking upon the face of the earth. You talk about submitting himself. You say, no, why did he do that? Well, number one, Mary did that because she knew that there was something eternal that was taking place. I believe Joseph knew that and submitted himself because there was something eternal that was taking place in their lives. You say, why did the shepherds submit themselves and say, well, it's just not us. I mean, we're used to being private and living in obscurity, but we're going to go tell everybody about this. Why would the shepherds submit themselves to be able to do that? Because they knew there was something eternal that just took place. You say, why would Jesus submit himself to the will of the Father and go to that cross. Listen, we've got to understand Christmas does not stop with a baby in a manger. The complete story of Christmas is a baby that was born, laid in a manger so that he could lay down his life upon a cross a little over 33 years later. And you say, why did he do that? Every announcement that was made to Joseph, to Mary, and to the shepherds, every announcement said, there's someone that's been born that's going to save you from your sins. Every announcement that was made. Now, can I say this? Usually the last one that needs to submit is you and I. We usually have an issue with that, don't we? You see, it's not you submitting to me or me submitting to you. It's us submitting our will to the Father. And understanding, yes, every one of us are sinners. We need to understand that. I don't think we'd have a hard time tonight convincing each and every one of us that are here that we're sinners. If you don't believe you're a sinner, let me ask your spouse that's sitting beside you. We can, get, we can get a good testament. We just don't have time to get into all that tonight because most of them would say, yeah, you're exactly right. Let me tell you this list right here, and this is just today. <laughs> okay, we understand that. And then we have teenagers that are here. I'm not a sinner. Let me ask your parents. Let me ask your little brother, your little sister, if they're a sinner. They'll tell us the truth on all of that. You see, we're all a sinner because we have our will. Every one of us have broken God's law. But you see, because of that, there's a price that needed to be paid. Someone has to pay for my sin. But I'm so thankful that I don't have to pay for it on my own. But I'm so thankful that there's a God in heaven that sent a baby to be laid in a manger, to be able to die on a cross, and to be able to pay for every one of my sins and every one of your sins. And where the Bible says, listen, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Boy, what a blessing that is, that he gives us that way of salvation that we can call upon him. Submission, the submission of Christmas through every one of these lives, they had to come to the point of saying, listen, this may not be what I want, but it's what I'm going to do because this is the will of God for my life. And they submitted themselves to the purpose of God. Can I encourage you to do the same thing? to allow God to be able to control our lives, to be able to guide us. You say, how does he do that? Well, by none other than using the word of God on a daily basis to be able to help give us guidance, give us direction. And uh, listen, I know he uses people. That's why he puts good Christian leaders in your life, good friends. But listen, if they're counseling you and pushing you against the word of God, they're not pushing you the right direction. And following the word of God and submitting, saying, hey, this is what God has for us. I say, praise the Lord. Let's follow it. Get some people in your life that way that will be able to help and be able to guide and be able to direct. And then we see it all throughout the Christmas season saying, God, would you help me to be able to submit 
to the will of God for my life. And I sure hope that you've done that. Listen, if you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ as your personal Savior, you don't understand and know the true meaning of Christmas, listen, it's not too late. It's not too late for you to be able to call upon the name of the Lord and say, listen, I need to know the greatest present that was ever given, wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger, not under a tree, because later on he'd be hanging on a tree for each and every one of us. And I'm so thankful for what Jesus has done. Don't go through this Christmas weekend without knowing what Jesus has done and the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning. And I'm so thankful for these examples that we have. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. We're just going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to close out singing some Christmas carols and getting ready to uh, have some candlelight and looking forward to the time together. And uh, thank you so much for this evening and all that the Lord has done in our hearts and lives. If you're here tonight with every head bowed, every eye closed, can I encourage you that if you do not know that you are a child of God, if you don't know that Jesus is your Savior, and can I encourage you that's the greatest gift that you can ever receive is by acknowledging, yes, I'm a sinner, and the true meaning of Christmas is that Jesus was born to be able to die for me. And boy, I'm so thankful for that. And can I encourage you, listen, we're here to be able to help guide and direct, be able to share the scriptures with you, be able to show you what the Bible has to say. If there's any doubt in your mind whatsoever, can I say we'd love to be able to take a Bible, show you how you can know for sure that you're a child of God. Know for sure, 100%. And so I want to encourage you, don't leave here tonight if that question's in your mind and you need to get that settled at any time, at any time. Our Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Lord, thank you so much for the Word of God. Lord, thank you for the example of each and every one that we see throughout the Christmas story. And Lord, we're thankful to be able to see their submission to you. And Lord, what the will of God is. But Lord, I also read over as Peter was writing where it says that the, the Lord's not slack concerning his promise and he's long suffering and he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. It is the will of God to be able to save each and every one. And so Lord, I pray that our will would be submitted to yours. It may be a hard task that God commands us for Lord, help us. Help us to submit knowing that you'll fulfill that. Thank you, Lord, for the scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing three songs. We're going to start with 144, just start with Silent Night. And so here's how we're going to do this. And uh, now you may not be able to use your songbook through all of it because this is where we're going to light the candles. And uh, so we're going to get ready for that. I'm going to go ahead. Brother Peter, you come on up here. And uh, we're going to get ready to light these. And we're going to have the men. Now, listen, we have the, the lighters down here. Here's how we're going to do this for you is we're going to light them from here. And the men are going to walk down the center aisle and the side aisles. And they'll just light the candles on the end. And if you can do it for us and help us, you light the person beside you, the candle of the person beside you. I'm just being very specific right now, okay? And uh, we're going to sing some Christmas carols as this is going on. We're going to sing Silent Night, Holy Night. We're going to sing Away in a Manger together. And we're going to close it out. We're going to sing Joy to the World together. And then we'll close it out by singing We Wish You a Merry Christmas, okay? And so why don't we stand together and I'm going to ask the men to come forward. And as soon as I get these lit, I need someone to shut them lights off back there. And uh, Miss Crystal's going to shut those off. All right, as we sing together, Silent Night, Holy Night, let's sing it together now. Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon Oh, 
so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Page 148, <clears throat> Away in a Manger. sing before we wish you a Merry Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. We'll sing the first and last, page 137 if you need it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive Christmas, and uh, I read a statement this week. One pastor said, he said, I'm not sure why Run Run Rudolph is not in the songbook. <laughs> and so we couldn't sing that tonight to be able to close it out tonight. And uh, I think Rudolph is running because he, got, he ran over Grandma. Uh -huh. and so, but uh, maybe so. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas. I want to encourage you. 
Uh, now, tomorrow morning, um, we are going to have our, our choir's been working on our Christmas cantata. And uh, so tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, um, we're actually going to have, that's why this is set up like this, we're going to have our Christmas cantata uh, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And then we're going to go downstairs and we're going to have coffee and cocoa and Christmas cookies. Amen. And uh, so we'll have that time together. We wanted to make it late enough. All the Christmas gifts have been opened. All the toys are broken. You're looking for something to be able to do with the kids. And uh, we'll be here at 10 o'clock for our Christmas cantata. Everybody's welcome to be able to come. It'd be a great joy Amen. and privilege to be able to have you here. And so let's have a word of prayer together to be able to close out. And then we'll wish one another a Merry Christmas as we sing, okay? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for the good day that you've given to us. Lord, thank you for the Christmas season. Lord, thank you. Lord, this is must have how it been. Lord, with just a, a candlelight, Lord, as our Savior was brought into this world. And uh, Lord, I do pray that we would remember that. Thank you so much, Lord, for each and every one that's been able to be here tonight, be able to spend the time together, be able to set some time aside and just remember Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd be with us as we leave here in just a few moments. But, Lord, as we celebrate tomorrow our Savior and uh, rejoice in what Jesus has done. And we thank you for that now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing it together now. Not the whole thing. No figgy pudding. Aww. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay, and there is a box in the back. We'll have the lights turned back on now. <laughs>